Here. Trustee Geezer. Here. Trustee Fuzzoloni. Here. Trustee McCarthy. Here. Mayor Severino. Here. Please uh, stand and face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Their motion to approve our minutes from our April 1st, 2024 Village Board meeting. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee McCarthy, seconded by Trustee Frizzoloni. Clerk, call the roll, please. Trustee Anselmo. Aye. Trustee Berger. Aye. Trustee Zalik. Aye. Trustee Geezer. Aye. Trustee Frizzoloni. Aye. Trustee McCarthy. Aye. Sir, motion approved but not released the executive session minutes of our April 1st, 2024 Village Board meeting. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Geezer, seconded by Trustee Anselmo. Clerk, call the roll, please. Trustee Anselmo. Aye. Trustee Berger. Aye. Trustee Zalik. Aye. Trustee Geezer. Aye. Trustee Fuzzoloni. Aye. Trustee McCarthy. Aye. <clears throat> Under listening posts, we have um, a proclamation recognizing April 26, 2024, as Arbor Day, and Trustee Geezer is asked if he could read that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it's a proclamation proclaiming Arbor Day in Carroll Street. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas this holiday, called Arbor Day, was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. And whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, and whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our most precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce life-giving oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees in Carroll Stream increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community. And whereas Carroll Stream is dedicated to the planting and care of trees for the purpose of maintaining a healthy and vibrant urban forest in our village. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the mayor and the board of trustees of the village of Carroll Stream that April 26, 2024, be known as Arbor Day in the village of Carroll Stream, and all residents are called upon to celebrate Arbor Day say, by supporting efforts to plant trees and protect our trees and woodlands to promote the well-being of this and future generations. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Geezer. Under uh, listening pulse, we have addresses from the audience tonight. We have several. Uh, Dr. Liana Calente. Terrible in name, so please don't take it personal. I, I won't. My name is Dr. Lena Callentine, and I want to speak on behalf of my community. Um, as a person, um, um, a resident of Carroll Stream, just blocks from where the incident occurred with Isaac's life was tragically taken, um, I think I agree with all the people that are here. We just plead to you to do what's right. Um, there has been an injustice. I couldn't come to the ability to watch another black body bleed and die where I have seen over and over and over. And I will um, encourage you to do the brave step in doing justice on behalf of Isaac <coughs> and his family. No more dead bodies like this. This needs to stop. And if this is the way you're trained, then those who are doing the training need to roll too. Thank you. Tracy Humping, read statement by Maya Miller. My name is Maya and I'm gonna read Tracy's statement. She sent it to me earlier today by email. Um, over the years, when another senseless murder of a person of color occurs at the hands of police, I have always found solace in the idea that it was happening far, far away. It gave me a tiny bit of peace that something like that could not happen in my backyard. Apparently, it may have been a false sense of peace. It seems to have now happened here in Carroll Stream. 
There is nothing we can do to bring back Isaac, but at the very least, we have to demand that justice is done. The full transcript and video footage needs to be released. No piece of evidence can remain in hiding. We have already learned that concealed evidence does not bring justice to murdered victims. It does not keep our people safe. It erodes trust in the system that is supposed to be keeping us safe. Bringing this case to trial where all the facts will be laid out and the justice system as well as the community can see for themselves what happened is nothing that Carol Stream, the city, should be afraid of. The public loses trust in their leaders only when they refuse to shine lights on the dark places. I urge the board to put pressure on Mr. Berlin to press charges against these officers and let the justice system do its job to ensure that justice is done for Isaac and his family. Thank you. Billy Rodriguez. <clears throat> Hello, board members. My name is Feli. I'm a resident of Elmhurst. Um, and honestly, it's really sad to hear that here in the suburbs, um, police brutality also exists, though it's not surprising. Um, this has been a problem since the inception of this country that it was uh, founded on racism and slavery. Um, and remnants of that still remain today with um, biased uh, murders and um, over-policing of people of color in this country. So I don't have a prepared speech, so I'll just keep it brief, but um, all the evidence needs to be released, body cam footage, the name of the officer, and, um, and I believe that, uh, what's it, that uh, charges to be, should be pressed against the officers that were involved in the murder of Isaac Goodloe. Um, we need justice, we need to work together and um, do what's right. So hope that you guys can do the brave thing like um, someone else said to make this right. Because this is honestly really painful for the people of the community. It's not how we should be as a country. Um, it's just really sad. So justice for Isaac. Grace Squires. Hi, Isaac Goodloe should still be here today. It is, hurts my soul to stand in a boardroom <laughs> um, and just kind of plead to you guys to do your jobs faster. Um, I'm here to reiterate the demands of the family, which include releasing the names of the officers involved and releasing the entire video and to just start working on the process. Um, I've heard that it really doesn't take this long in other places. Um, so that's something that people <laughs> really need to look into. Um, but also as an abolitionist, I know that our justice system can never serve true justice. Um, no black person should ever die in America ever again. Um, the only way uh, we keep us safe, the police do not keep us safe. Um, the safest, the way to keep our community safer is to get the police out of our communities and out of this country. Um, abolish the police. Ruth Julian. Good evening. My name is Dr. Ruth Julian. I live in Wheaton, Illinois, near Wheaton College. I first want to acknowledge the family of Isaac Goodloe. I grieve with you, I stand with you. I'm very sorry for your loss. Isaac should be alive today. Yes. 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 That's all I should have to say. But I will say more. My grief becomes righteous anger as I turn to those who have been tasked with leading and caring for this community.
This grieving family has not only had to deal with their grief and unimaginable loss of Isaac, just 30 years old, same age as my daughter, three years younger than my youngest son, five years younger than my oldest son. I cannot imagine losing a child killed in their bed by a band of police who entered their home in the middle of the night. The loss is devastating. Can you do something? Not only is this family dealing with their loss, they have asked for over two months. That's too long. Over two months for transparency. Well, that, that's all you need to do. A bit of transparency. Come on, folks, you got kids. The names of the officers, you all know who they are. You know who they are. The release of all the evidence, they deserve that. My goodness, wouldn't you want that? Wouldn't you want that? So I add my voice to the request of the family. Give the family the transparency they're requesting and they deserve. Share the names of the officers who entered his home that night. I know this type of incident would not have ha happened in my home in Wheaton. White family, white neighborhood. I'm going to say it flat out. But if it had, I guarantee you this type of incident, the city council would have been falling over themselves to rectify what they did wrong. Right? The same needs to be done for Isaac's family. Thank you very much. Gabrielle Rizek. Um, hello, my name is Gabby Rezek. I live in Wheaton, just over the border of Carroll Stream and where the shooting occurred. Um, I am here tonight, as well as everyone else, I'm asking for more transparency regarding the tragic shooting of Isaac Goodlow by Carroll Stream Police on February 3rd of this year. The police have reported that Mr. Goodlow was in bed and unarmed. Why was lethal force used? Please release the unredacted video and the names of the officers involved. The community deserves answers, and more importantly, Mr. Goodlow's family does. Thank you. Kanetta Barnes. Isaac's sister, I just feel like we shouldn't be here two and a half months later. Mm -hmm. Why? Why are we still here? This should be solved. I understand what happened in Chicago. Cook County and DuPage is different. If Cook County could drop all videos from the beginning in the car to the end, Carol Stream should drop all videos. When you drop the other ones, everything should have been released. Release the officer's name. Release the 911 call to the public. Release all the videos. That's all I have to say. Just be transparent. Like It seems like you guys are holding something back. Let us see it. We, we deserve to see Isaac's last moments, the beginning in the car, all of that. You guys have it. Release it. We should not keep coming here. The only way that we should be here, my family, because we are care stream. And we're in a community. We should only be coming here to see what's going on with the board meeting, not talking about Isaac. This should have been solved two months ago. It's like a game. It needs to stop. Robert Berlin, he needs to be here. We're tired of waiting. And we're not angry. We want justice. Do what's right. The training was terrible. We all seen the video. It was terrible. 
Those cops that entered should not have been in there. They, they had no business being in there. They were falling. They, they were just, they shouldn't have been there. Glasses on, never took them off in a mirror. It was like a game, like this lady falling, this guy falling. It's just terrible. Like, I, would, you, I see why you guys don't want to release it. It looked like a video game. And at this point, you're playing with Isaac Goodlow family. We want answers. We want justice. Yes. We want the officer's name. Yes. We're not looking for them. Once you release the names, we want justice. We want to know who did this. And why are you covering up their names? Yes. Release the names so that we could get justice. You guys did enough. You did enough. Isaac is gone. We could not bring him back. What are we waiting on? Give us justice. Release the officer's name. Charge the officer. I know all six of them won't be charged. I wish they could be. But I know all of them didn't pull that trigger. And you guys know that. And I'm not mad at you, Chief. You wasn't out there. I'm not mad at you. At first I was, I had to realize, you know what? You, you wasn't out there. The officers, that, what they did, they need to be charged, at least one of them. The, the one that, that bullet to the heart. To the heart, he needs to be charged. He's at home with his family, with his kids, with his wife, with his mom, with his sister, with his brother. We don't have Isaac. Like, let's do what's right. Let's be transparent. Let's be honest. The flag, everything that y'all doing, charge that officer. You don't gotta charge all six, charge the one. We know the other one that went off was, I guess, accidentally. Charge that first officer. He went in there to kill. He was hunting. I like every color, everybody. But what I seen on that video was a hunting for my brother. And we want justice and we're not stopping. I don't care if the room going to two people, just two of y'all, we're not stopping. We gonna be in Carol Stream for 10 years if it take 10. Because we know what it take. We know what it take when you battle against the police shooting. That ain't easy. Yeah. That is not easy. I don't care what video you release or what you try to hide. It's still not easy. Because they want to they wanna be what's right, but they're not right. <laughs> they're not right. If they were right, the video would be released. It would be transparent. We won't be here. I won't be talking to you. They'll be in DuPage County Police, but you probably won't be talking to them neither. Let's just do what's right for America, for one time, for one time, at least one time for Isaac Goodlow. Everybody know how it feels to lose a loved one, right, Mayor? We all lose loved ones, right? No matter how they die, but we know Isaac Goodlow's death was not right. It was tragic, and I'm not accepting what, what you're trying to give us. Give us the real deal. Release all the video to the, to the public, not just to us. Everything, 54 minutes, one hour, 60 minutes, release it. What are you guys hiding? The officers were on the scene, they were on the job, release it. That's not hiding, it work. Why are we hiding it? Do what's right, transparent. Y'all don't need to use that word unless you know the real definition. Deontay Barnes. James McKnight. Isaac Gullo, oldest nephew. And I just got something to say. Um, I'm Dejanay. I don't have too much to say, but I just want to say, can you guys just be transparent? Give us the officer names. Be right. Do, do what's right. Just be, just be, as you say, justice for all, right? For America. Do that. Justice, no matter what the color is. For every black man. For every color. For every color. Nobody. So look, that's what I got to say. What if a black officer kill a white person and they sleep? How would y'all feel? Answer it. Ain't got nothing to say. Hey, see, so that's how we feel about my uncle being gone. And that's how we feel about every black man being gone. George Floyd, everybody, not just my uncle. It can happen to me. It can happen to us. It can happen to his brothers. Think about it. We hurting too. Y'all ain't got to lock all six of them up, but at least lock the one that killed them. He 
he need to be in jail now. Why is he getting paid time off for killing a black man? That's all I got to say. Y'all, y'all got to feel our pain. But if y'all don't feel our pain, you see what happened when George Floyd died and the world went crazy? Y'all don't want that. So just do what we say do. Post the real videos and show faces and we want to know names. That's Berger, just so you all know who I am. Um, hi, my name is Julie Berger, um, and I'm here as a concerned community member. Over two months ago, the Carroll Stream police officers shot and killed Isaac Goodlow. He was at home, alone, and unarmed. I'm not only concerned about the situation and how it was handled that night, but I'm very much concerned with the lack of action in the two months following the incident. If you've not yet, not yet watched the edited body, body cam footage, uh, I implore you to do so. While it's devastating to watch, and it clearly does not tell the entire story, it does tell a gut-wrenching story of the last moments of a man's life at the hands of those who were trusted to protect and serve him. Lethal force was used as their first choice in a relatively calm situation. The Carroll Stream Police Department has not provided full disclosure on the timeline of events or officers involved. The family has the right to the names of the officers um, and to see unedited body cam footage of the interaction. The officers Im uh, immediately involved with the shooting must be held accountable for killing an unarmed man who was in his home and not threatening the officers in any way. The Carroll Stream Police Department must also proactively take action to ensure that all officers are following proper response protocols in the future. It seems that there was zero reason for lethal force in this situation. I can't imagine what it feels like to have officers enter your home with guns drawn pointing at you. If someone had done that to my son, it would be devastating even if the outcome wasn't him being shot. You know, if a situation arose that some, something went sideways and somebody got out of control, why would the officers not have first tried physical restraint or the use of a taser or something other than guns being the first, the first thought? I'm infuriated that a man in my community died at the hands of a police officer and that the police department isn't taking swift ownership of the situation. They forever fractured a family and the trust of so many in the community. They owe this family the respect and partnership that they deserve as they wade through the fallout of this terrible incident. From what I can tell, mistakes have been made, the process is broken, and the police officers fired their weapons at an unarmed man. Plain and simple, the family of Isaac Goodloe deserves transparency, answers, for, uh, answers, and for the officers who fired the lethal shots to just be held accountable. We all deserve to feel like law enforcement will keep us safe and do the right thing. And right now, sadly, I cannot say that I fully believe that myself. Thank you. Maya Miller. My name's Maya Miller. I live in Wheaton. Um, it gets harder and harder every time I come here. And I had things to say and I just, I don't really wanna be coming here anymore. Um, it's been a few weeks since I last stood here and that time it was just me, the only person that looked like me in this room and you and the family. And since then, it seems like the wheels of justice have barely turned at all. Um, it's been two and a half months and the family is still waiting to hear why lethal force was used to kill their family member. They don't have the names of the officers who killed their family member. They, they have had a funeral. They have had services. They are, they are in mourning. And they still don't know the facts as to what happened. I want to know when the city is going to take accountability for the loss of unarmed citizens to the, to the hands of people who we pay. We pay to protect us. We pay your salaries. We pay for this. 
Last time it was me, but I have been finding over the past couple weeks that there are people behind me in my community that are also concerned, not only for the Goodloe family, but in how their family may be treated in this community and how this situation is being handled. Like Julie said, I would ask that if you haven't seen the video and all of the video, if you have access to more than what we do, that you watch it. I find it unethical if any of you have sat there and not had to stomach the reality of what happened in that room while sitting there doing nothing for the family. I believe that the family and the public deserves to know the names of the officers. I am hoping that very soon Mr. Berlin will decide to file the appropriate charges and that the department will seriously reevaluate its protocols. There was zero reason for six officers to enter Isaac's home with guns and shields already drawn. Zero reason. They walked in with guns and shields drawn. I'm going to continue coming to these meetings, not because I don't have anything else to do on Monday nights, but because I promised a member of this family that I am going to fight for a place that he can live and not think that he might be the next black man who's accidentally shot by a police officer. <laughs> Right now, I feel like you have a really good opportunity. In the midst of tragic situations, we always have really hard choices to make, and I feel like we have an opportunity in Carol Stream to make a real positive change. We can't bring Isaac back. We can't heal their family from that loss, but we can respond and ensure that this does not happen in our community again. And that's up to you and how this is handled. Thank you. Jeff Miller. As is always the case, it's impossible to follow my wife, um, especially in an unfortunate situation like this. But I'm a community member as well. I'm here to talk to you all. Um, nothing is going to bring Isaac Goodloe back. His family has been mourning this tragedy. Um, but I'm, a concerned fam I'm, I'm cons here for concern for their family and for this community. And I want to start with the end in, in mind. Ask all of yourselves, what justice and answers would each of you want? <clears throat> As it's been said, many months have passed, and this family has no peace, no answers, and no justice. As Maya mentioned, we, I, know one of the family members personally, and he has thoughts and nightmares that he will be the next young black man shot in his sleep, with no time to defend himself and for no worries. Have any of you ever had those thoughts? I know I have not. Additionally, Isaac Goodloe's name and family have been in the public eye facing judgment that is unkind and unfair. Yet the names of the police officers have not. They rest comfortably at home. I'd only ask that you put yourselves in their shoes. What justice and what answers would you want? Again, what justice and what answers would you want? James McKnight. He confessed on that side. He spoke already. He spoke with my daughter. Oh, he was first? He was with he spoke Oh, okay. That was the end. Is there anybody else that would like to say anything? even though you didn't sign up. Thank you for the opportunity. My name is Stephen Hart. I represent the family in the civil action that they filed, the federal court case. Uh, a few things that just seem apparent to me. You all uh, stood up dutifully to say the Pledge of Allegiance with your hands over your hearts, saying that justice for all. And those are nice words, and it's a nice ritual to go through. But the family sits here and doesn't feel like it's justice for all. They feel like it's justice for a few and not for those that look like them. 
there's not a ton of diversity I see in this council. That may be part of the problem. But in my experience, the wheels of justice move much quicker when it's someone of color that's being accused, and somewhat slower, as is evidenced here, when public officials are involved. And so you can see the problem, and you can understand the animosity that the community feels, and the great pain and devastation that the family feels when they cannot even get so much as the individual's names who perpetrated this murder. That is significant to them. And they want you to understand it and feel it. And so I will just echo the prayers and pleas of the family members and the community that individuals that were involved in the call that evening should be disclosed and without further delay. And the city council should offer a plan, an investigation, a detailed explanation as to what took place and then offer solutions as to how it will be corrected and never happen again. I'll suggest that uh, that's the least this council can do for the family. Uh, and it's your duty to do it on behalf of your community. Thank you very much. Anybody else would like to speak? No, thank you for having us. You're very welcome. Our motion to establish a consent agenda. So moved. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. There was one electronic comment. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I should it's have asked right. you first. Uh, this is uh, dated April oh, 15th. Wait a second. We got to close the door because I can't. I got it. <clears throat> Dated April 15th, 2024, from Jessica Banaschek of Warrenville, Illinois. Her comment is, I'm writing to express my support for Mr. Goodloe's family and to express concern for the lack of transparency surrounding this case. I urge the city and SAO to come to a swift conclusion to the investigation into the events that ended Mr. Goodloe's life, as well as a thorough review of protocols and procedures, training and response to these types of incidents. This family and the community deserves answers and accountability. And that was the one electronic comment. That's it. Thank you. Is there a motion to establish a consent agenda? So moved. Moved by Trustee Second. McCarthy, seconded by Trustee Frizzoloni. Clerk, call the roll, please. Trustee Anselmo. Aye. Trustee Berger. Aye. Trustee Zalik. Aye. Trustee Geezer. Aye. Trustee Frizzoloni. Aye. Trustee McCarthy. Aye. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, would you please read what is on the consent agenda? Certainly. Staff reports and recommendations. Approval of the alcohol sales agreement between the Village of Carroll Stream and Carroll Stream Rotary Club to allow the sale of beer, wine, 
hard seltzer and hard lemonade at the upcoming Geek Fest and summer concert series events at Town Center? Yes. 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 Approval of a contract extension with Lakeshore Recycling Systems for street sweeping services in the amount of $93,179.98 for the period of May 1st, 2024 through April 30th, 2025, pursuant to the provisions of Section 5-8-3B and Subsection 5-8-14N of the Village Code of Ordinances. Yes. yes. <clears throat> Approval of Amendment Number 8 to the Agreement for Operations, Maintenance, and Management Services of the Water Reclamation Center and the amount of $2,271,532 for the period of May 1st, 2024 through April 30th, 2025. Yes. 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 <clears throat> Authorization to purchase and install 32 Public Works gear lockers at the Public Works Center from Walter, Inc. for an amount not to exceed $68,230 pursuant to the provisions of Section 5-8-14C of the Village Code of Ordinances. Yes. 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 Approving change order number one and final payment to Jetco Limited in the amount of $83,186.35 for rehabilitation to the Gerzevsky Lane Water Tower. Yes. 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 2024 flexible payment project award of contract to Builders Paving in the amount of $2,524,979.17. Yes. 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 2024 roadway drainage improvements project award of contract to Emergia Sewer Rehab in the amount of $148,500. Yes. yes. Resolutions. <coughs> Resolution declaring public works generator surplus and be authorized to dispose of the property as proposed pursuant to the provisions of Section 5-8-15 of the Carroll Stream Code of Ordinances. Yes. 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 That is Resolution number 3359. Payment of bills. Regular bills April 2nd, 2024 through April 15th, 2024. Yes. 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 A denim warrants, April 2nd, 2024 through April 15th, 2024. Yes. yes. Treasurer's report, revenue expenditure statements and balance sheet for the month ended March 31st, 2024. Received. 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 And that concludes the items on the consent agenda, Mr. Mayor. Is there a motion to put those items on the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Anselmo, seconded by Trustee Zaila. Clerk, call the roll, please. Trustee Anselmo. Aye. Trustee Bircher. Aye. Trustee Zaila. Aye. Trustee Geezer. Aye. Trustee Fruzzoloni? Aye. Trustee McCarthy? Aye. Is there a motion to approve those items by omnibus vote? So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Fruzzoloni, seconded by Trustee McCarthy. Clerk, call the roll, please. Trustee Anselmo? Aye. Trustee Berger? Aye. Trustee Zalik? Aye. Trustee Geezer? Aye. Trustee Fruzzoloni? Aye. Trustee McCarthy? Aye. Report officers. Trustee Anselmo? Good evening. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome our uh, newest officers uh, today, Officer Kennecott and Officer Aranda. Um, in Trustee Zalik's absence, I did answer, ask the questions. Uh, apparently, Officer Kennecott is a Sox fan. He's not places. Officer Aranda is a Dodgers fan. So there's blue. Um, I do want to commend the Rotary uh, Club of Carroll Stream. Uh, over the weekend, we just had amazing weather compared to last year and uh, some stats that I'm stealing. We filled 45 six-foot tables of donations from the community. And of those bags, six vehicles were filled um, with pantries around the, the uh, communities. It's just outstanding. Carroll Stream res residents should be just uh, commended for their outpouring of support. Uh, and lastly, I would ask residents, now it's getting warmer out, it's getting, everybody's rolling their windows down to just be mindful of your speeds driving through our neighborhoods. And that would conclude my report. Thank you, Trustee Anselmo. Trustee Berger. I have no report tonight. Trustee Zalek. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First off, um, we read about Arbor Day, um, which I look forward to, uh, uh, April 26, we yearly go to a school and plant a tree, and it's great to see the elementary school kids come out and get all excited with their helmets on, the, the public works plastic helmets, and so it's just awesome to get them at that age and see how excited they are over a tree, but you know, trees are very, very um, important in our community. Um, also Earth Day, and I'm sure 
Um, the village clerk will speak about uh, plans for Earth Day, um, but it's supposed to be celebrated on April 22nd to, and it's to demonstrate support for environmental protection. So I challenge residents, um, if they see trash in their neighborhood, pick it up and recycle their garbage. Um, I like to sometimes look at um, special dates throughout the year and the month, um, and we don't have enough time to go through what happened on April 14th, but um, the fourth week of April is Administrative Assistance Week, um, and 424 is Administrative Professionals Day. So I want to thank all the administrators in this village for doing such a great job um, day in and day out. Um, week in and week out. Um, they're always top notch and I wanna give a sincere thank you and I challenge village um, uh, department heads to show their support and thank them during the fourth week of April. Um, and then let's uh, keep our first responders and military in our thoughts and prayers. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Trustee Um I too would like to concur uh, about the, uh, the rotary food drive every year. It seems to get bigger and bigger, and this one was truly amazing, truly amazing. Thank you to the residents for their generosity. Thank you to the Rotary Club and all the volunteers who participated to, to assist the six food pantries uh, that service Carroll Stream residents uh, that were beneficiaries. Um, it's sad that uh, there is a need, but it's, it's nice to know that when there is a need, Carol Stream residents step up. Um, just wanted to let you know also with the warm weather, a lot of people are thinking about the parade, 4th of July parade. <coughs> and uh, the, the committee will be holding a fundraiser, one of their many fundraisers, uh, will be this Thursday at Augustino's. No flyers necessary, just mention that you're supporting the parade. Hopefully people will pop into that. Everyone loves Augustino's. And it's the Carol Stream Augustino's. Carol Stream Augustinos. And I was happy to read the Arbor Day uh, proclamation again this year. Happy that Trustee Zalek mentioned Arbor Day. Uh, one, of the, one of the obligations of the village um, is to set aside an Arbor Day event because we are a tree city. Could you tell us about tree city, um, uh, Mr. Homer? Trustee Geezer, I could, but I think that should come from Public Works Director Fink. Sure, I'd be happy to talk about that. So this for the we just got notification from the Illinois Department of Natural Resources that Carroll Stream uh, was awarded Tree City USA. This is our second consecutive year. Uh, basically, there's a number of uh, parameters that has to be met, but it basically proves uh, that the village uh, is actively maintaining, pursuing, and advocating for uh, trees and urban forest management with, within, the, within the village. And I always mention this, so, you know, slap me down if you think uh, you've heard this one before. Carroll Stream has a true connection to Arbor Day. We have a thoroughfare that runs through Carroll Stream, Morton Road, which is named after Mark Morton, um, who was one of the co-founders of Morton Salt. And his father is, uh, is uh, Sterling Morton, uh, uh, Morton who founded, Mort, uh, founded um, Arbor Day. Um, Mark Morton, he lived on the corner of Morton and North Avenue. Many of us remember the old Morton Manor. It was haunted. Uh, it was haunted. Uh, that's where the Wheaton Bible Church is now located. Um, he lived there from when he built the, the manor in 1931 to when he died on the property in 1951. And um, his brother, Joy, uh, is the founder of Morton Arboretum. I'm sure we've all been there. And Mark is buried on the family plot at Morton Arboretum. So there is a tangible connection in Carroll Stream. And one of the things that Mark Morton did when he built the manor was of course he planted trees throughout the community and I'm sure m there might be a few, there might be a few left um, from that era, but he every year would plant hundreds and thousands of trees uh, each year throughout what became Carroll Stream. That's my report, Mr. Mayor and board. Thank you, Trustee Geezer, and thank you for reading that and being so thorough on the Morton. <laughs> certainly, certainly. 
Thank you. Trustee Frisolani. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, again, amazing for our community um, to come out for the community-wide food drive. It takes a village. Um, it takes a lot of planning. Kudos to the um, Rotary Club. It, this is always um, about a month in advance they start gathering all of the volunteers that it's gonna take. And really, I think the success to it is the people that volunteer to go and put bags out and go door to door in neighborhoods, um, be block captains to ask people to make donations. And this year, I can tell you from the amount of Advil that I took on Saturday night, the bags were heavy. It was probably, the bags were more packed this year than I think I've ever seen. Um, we were actually trying to consolidate bags to, to you know, try and lighten them, up, lighten them up, and it was almost impossible because every bag was almost full to overflowing. The schools contributed so much. So it really takes everybody in this community to help fight um, food insecurity. What's really wonderful to see is when the food pantries come and we loaded everything from panel vans to a Prius with food. Um, and it's a good problem when they say, we don't have any more room in our vehicles. And I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Mayor actually stepped up and helped one of the pantries that needed additional vehicles because there was so much food. And I packed his car as high as we could possibly go so he could see out the windshield. That was about it. Um, that's the truth, too. <laughs> it is. It is. There's a, there's a system, there's a method to the madness. You stack high and deep. I mean, Brian Sokolowski with the um, Carroll Stream uh, Park District Board, him and I were in one of them, and it was just, it felt like they, we were never going to end. And they kept saying 30 more bags, and we're like, that was 30 more bags. They're like, no, no, it's 30 more. Then it was 30 more. And then we kept saying, how many tables? Are, oh, four more tables. I'm like, that's more than 30 bags. So this year, if you have ever seen the food drive, they, Glenbard North, we put the tables right at the curb off of Coon Road. We actually went into the landscaping against the, the building. We've never had that much before, ever. Um, so it's great to see that people who need the food pantries, and there's such a desperate need, they're going to be loaded for, for a little while. Piggybacking off of that, but not to steal anything from... Trustee McCarthy, Wednesday night, as part of the bags tournament, we get to hand out checks now to these food pantries to help them even more with filling in gaps with what they still need beyond what they received from the food pantry. So the money that we're going to give to them is going to give them tremendous buying power um, with Illinois National or Northern Illinois Food Bank, where they get like $7 to every $1 donated. You heard donate. it's moved up to eight to one now. That's amazing. So our food pantries will be taken care of for months. And it's, again, because of the residents of Carroll Stream. So I just wanted to say thank you. Um, it's great to be part of every single year. So much bigger than us. We were all out there um, helping out. Um, and just thank you to the residents and to the Rotary Club and especially the volunteers. So with that, I will end my report. Trustee McCarthy. Well, first off, absolutely, uh, thank you to the Rotary Club. Um, they've taken something and made it a community event. Um, tons of volunteers, but you need somebody to steer the ship, and, and the Rotary does just a wonderful job uh, putting all the volunteers in a place that they're able to accomplish what they did. Uh, yeah, seeing the bags and the donation, it was just, it was unbelievable and uh it speaks volumes to our community um you know you hear a lot of us chirp off about one team carol stream here you go again this is the perfect example uh, a shout out went for help and pretty much everybody who got a bag answered that help so it it's just amazing thank you to all the residents and again the volunteers it, it was absolutely amazing um yeah, Wednesday is the official end of, of our 2024 bag season, our favorite day of the year. Um, we raised $86,250, and on Wednesday, we're going to give away $86,250. Um, 
split between a, a about 15 different uh, different charities, with which of course Relay for Life, American Cancer Society, the the leading one at about 40 percent of that. Um, but it, the rest of it stays local. The rest of it touches all the food pantries. The rest of it touches um, Violet's Kitchen, who who feeds the homeless. The rest of it touches um, scholarships given through the Dominic Saverino Foundation, or making sure any kid who any person who wants to be involved with a park district event, no matter their financial situation, is able to do it. And this year even, we get to kickstart Bloomingdale's by, by doing the same thing and giving them some because the Bloomingdale uh, Park District has always been a big supporter of us, especially the last couple, three years. Um, it's absolutely the coolest night in the world when you get to just hand out checks and, and the emotion people show that when we started doing it, I'm like, oh, this is cool. And they're like, no, you don't understand what this thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars does um, and what we can accomplish with it. So uh, it's, it's absolutely amazing. And this is 100% why the, why the wonderful committee we have does what we do, do and the sponsors and the players and the volunteers and the donators. This is why we do it. We do it to make an impact to touch locally and, and hopefully help the American Cancer Society solve some of the cancer craziness. Um, so more than anything, it's, it's like I said, it's the most exciting day of the year. Um, I'd be remiss not to say happy birthday to my grandkids, Dean and Madison, and that was last week. And um, as everybody said, it's getting nicer out. A couple things, kids don't pay attention. They run out behind cars, they run out in front of cars, they ride their bikes, so just kind of look out for them. It's our job to slow down and look around. And while you're looking at the street, there, there's these drain ditches and the, these culverts that if there's leaves on them or branches, anything like that, it, this is a great time to, to clean them out. So that way, if we get heavy rains, they go into the storm sewers instead of into our yards or into our houses or, or even just flooding the street. Um, this is just a great time to do it with it being so nice and uh, it makes everybody's job a little easier. With that, I will end my report. Thank you, Trustee McCarthy, and thank you for you and your team for all that you've done this year. Again, when you think about, I think it's 4,000 each food bank gets, that's times eight. I mean, it's $32,000 worth of food. I mean, that will keep the food banks going for a month, month and a half, two months. What we gave them, I was already notified by uh, Milton Township that we gave them at least two months of food that they'll be able to have. And then Wednesday night, they'll get another $4,000, which will give them probably another two or three months of food, which means everybody that lives in Wheaton, that that's where they're headquartered at <coughs> stream, will be able to go in there and get food when they need it. So thank you, and I know how much work it was. Everybody was there. We were all there selling <coughs> raffle tickets and doing things and trying to raise money. And because one of the reasons on the 24th, I will be at the high school with my family, and we're given 11 scholarships out awesome. for $1,000 apiece. And six of them are picked by the Kohler family, which were teachers at one time at the high school. And then we pick five. I don't pick any. My daughter... Denise, there's like four or five of them, Carol Stream people, that actually pick by need. And again, thank you for giving us the money, and then it goes right back into the community. And I appreciate that. Thank you. Brianna? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, on the same note that some of the board members have mentioned, Arbor Day, Earth Month, Earth Day, and a few of the village's sustainable initiatives, I would just like to remind residents that the village hosts a pond and stream sweep. That event is taking place on May 4th and it's an annual volunteer-based cleanup event to help clean up some of our local waterways. Uh, the village provides basic equipment so you don't need to bring anything <clears throat> on your own. Uh, all you have to do is fill out an online form that's available on the homepage of our website, carolstream.org, and show up. So if you're looking uh, to do something in honor of Earth Month, this would be a great opportunity. And event season is coming up. I would just like to remind everyone that all information about the village's events is available on our website, social media, and our newsletters. 
So don't forget to mark some of those dates in your calendars. Additionally, there is still time to contribute sponsorship funds for our concert series. Our concert series depends on sponsorship, sponsorship donations, and we are extremely grateful to those organizations that have uh, engaged a sponsorship opportunity already, and there is still time. So for those who are interested, I encourage you to visit our website, carolstream.org. All of the information is on there or you can contact the village at concertseries at carolstream.org to learn more. Thank you. Thank you. Where are we right now? We are just $7,000 short from our goal of 30000 Thank you. Julia, clerk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So in light of Earth Month, I'll tag on to what Brianna just said about uh, May 4th, the pond sweep, or pond and stream sweep, um, I have a team of many of you helping out um, for the town basin, so let me know if you'd like to help. Um, I have little hats for everybody. And also doing a cleanup of the Great Western Trail on April 27th, so anybody who would like to help, let me know. I'd love to have more people. And congratulations to Public Works and the Village of Carroll Stream for the Tree City USA um, recognition two years in a row. That's quite quite an accomplishment. One more environmental thing I wanted to mention is that Trustee Geezer and his wife Kim are the Mason Bee experts of Carroll Stream, and they offered <coughs> to take in our bee house to populate it with the Mason Bees this weekend. So I'm just very grateful for you for doing that, and I just think that's a great way to help increase our pollinators. And I have to find out when we're supposed to take that bee house back home. There's a lot of activity around it okay, already. It's mating so, season, yeah, right? It's so mating it's season. A lot of activity happening. Wow, so. chicka wow, wow. Yes, with the mason bees. And there's a and there's a the same day as the DuPage County and um, Village Pond and Stream Sweep. There's also the Scarce event, their annual Grow and Green Market. That mm -hmm. same day, I think it's from nine to one, and there you can buy bee houses like like the one that <clears throat> we got last year. So, and other than that, I just wanted to mention that I was. Uh, just elected president of our municipal clerks of DuPage County organization at our last meeting. And um, thank you. <laughs> and our, our next meeting is June 5th, and I would love to have as many of you there as possible. Um, there will be the annual meeting as well as swearing in of the new officers, and I will be hosting it at North Avenue Pub and Grill just down the street. So hope you can come. Let me know um, by May 15th so I can arrange for your dinner tickets. Congratulations. Thank by you. The way. Thank you very much. Oh, June 5th, Wednesday, June 5th. She the... sent us an email. And other than that, I just want to say shop and dine Carol Stream. That's all I have. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Rose, our village attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, last week, the Senate was very busy in Illinois. They passed uh, 200 bills. Uh, so we are, uh, we're still looking at, uh, at those and trying to figure out which ones uh, have gotten through that, that will affect uh, municipalities. Um, two items that have still uh, not been completed, though, um, is the bill which prohibits crime-free housing um, and also the uh, governor's uh, budget bill uh, with the grocery tax eliminated. So uh, if you have not uh, already uh, sent in comments uh, or contacted your legislators with respect to those two items, I would recommend that you do so. Um, there's still a big push uh, to, uh, to attempt to uh, have those uh, not go forward, and um, hopefully that will be successful. And that's the end of my report. Thank you, Mr. Rhodes. And I hope that those bills never come to fruition because they're going to be terrible for everybody. Mr. Homer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, very quickly, uh, April we recognize as uh, Distracted Driving Awareness Month. Um, so in addition to the things that Trustee McCarthy commented about, I uh, just want to remind the public to put down those cell phones and pay attention to the road. Uh, and lastly, I want to uh, recognize uh, the Community Development Department. <laughs> Uh, the department periodically undergoes an evaluation of their building code adoption and enforcement information to develop a building code effectiveness grade. Uh, they were evaluated in 2023 and received a grade that ranks them with a score which only 10% of Illinois communities have earned. So, well done, Don and his team. That's the end of my report.
Okay, well, my report's going to be simple. On March 6th, my wife passed away. So I haven't been able to talk about it until tonight, and now all I want to do is say thank you to all of you that supported me, the residents that came out and stopped either at my house or were at the funeral or the wake. I just I can't say enough. The people that showed up at the church, the love that they showed me is just phenomenal. I am the most fortunate guy in the world to have be surrounded by people like all of you, the staff, every one of you, and the people that live in this town. It's absolutely amazing. And then you hear stories like the what raising $86,000 and giving it all away, and the things that happen in this community are phenomenal things. There's a bump in the road every once in a while, or a heat cup, or whatever you want to call it. It isn't always going to be perfect, but on a whole, I wouldn't live anyplace else than Carroll Stream because of the people that are in this community. So uh, it's been very tough, and a lot of you have helped me get through this. Uh, I couldn't have talked about this. Trustee Frizzoloni wanted to say something six weeks ago, and I wouldn't let her. I was going to do it myself, and every time I got up here, I, I started, and then I had no report because I couldn't get it out. So I finally been able to, I, I, I had her in my life married for 61 years, the best 61 years of anybody could ask for. So, plus we grew up as kids together, so I mean, most of us will never live to see that, and I hope that some of you do. But for me, it was like to have her as a wife for all them years, a mother, a partner, a wife, a lover, just could not ask for a better woman. I miss her dearly, but I feel the love from all my friends. So thank you. For my, that ends my report. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee McCarthy, seconded by Trustee Frizzloni. Clerk, call the roll, please. We love you too, Mr. Mayor. Trustee Insamo. Aye. Trustee Bircher. Aye. Trustee Zalik. Aye. Trustee Geezer. Aye. Trustee Frizzloni. Aye. Trustee McCarthy. All right. Meeting is adjourned. Hey, Bill, this is the original. Do you want to?